What's up guys, Raiho here. Um, just got done watching a movie and I thought, what the hell, I'll make a video on it. Um, it's one that I, I, I really enjoyed when I saw it in theaters, um, and I, I watched it every once in a while. I've probably seen it like three or four times at this point. Um, and I don't know, I was in the mood to watch it tonight. Uh, Halloween's right around the corner, and I don't know, I find it kind of like a Halloween movie, I guess. I don't know why, but um, that movie is Darkness Falls from 2003, uh, which is directed by Jonathan Liebesman, um, written by Joe Harris, James Vanderbilt, and John Fasano. Um, the film stars Cheney Clay as Kyle Walsh, who's like the main antagonist of the film, I guess. Um, protagonist, sorry. <laughs> uh, Emma Caulfield as Caitlin Green. She's from, of course, Buffy the Vampire Slayer fame. Um, Sullivan Stapleton as Matt Henry, one of the officers in the movie. Uh, and Lee Cormie plays uh, the young boy Michael Green in the film. And uh, the idea is that there's like this, um, I don't know what to call it, I guess this vengeful ghost or something, uh, uh, you know, this spirit that uh, is attacking the town of Darkness Falls because I think it was like 150 years, in, you know, in the past, um, she was killed um, unjustly because they thought that she had done something to some of the children in the town. Um, she would collect teeth from the children um, and give them something for it. Um, and when two kids went missing, they instantly blamed her and burned her to death and found out the kids were fine the next day. And now she sort of haunts the town and basically the idea is that there's a story that goes around that if you know you put your last baby tooth under your pillow and if you were to look at her she'll kill you or something like that so if she comes into the into your bedroom to take the tooth she'll kill you if you if you look um, and uh, so basically the movie opens with a young boy um, Kyle Walsh, what I mentioned before, uh, he's about 12 years old or something like that, and he puts his last pillow under his tooth, and he hears something, and he, he looks, and of course he sees uh, the Tooth Fairy, um, and essentially he gets away. Um, she can't attack in the light. She can only attack in the darkness, so he runs to a, a well lit room and, and hides, and he's after that he's moved out of the town, and it, she sort of haunted him all his life, and it's 12 years later when he's about 24, 25, something like that, um, that he sort of um, finds his way back home to Darkest Falls. Um, as far as the story goes, it's, it's fine, it's middle of the road, it's nothing special, it's just... You know your standard movie fare, I guess, and for a PG-13 movie in the in the early 2000s, late 90s kind of thing. Um, I kind of like the story. It's kind of like an old legend kind of thing, which I you know I'm down with. Um, the one thing that drives me nuts is that the writers sort of write. They've written these rules um, that you know the, she only attacks in the in the light, uh, the Tooth Fairy. Um, she only attacks you if you look at her. Uh, all this different stuff, and then they repeatedly like break the rules in the movie, which drives me nuts. Just lazy writing, like, um, uh, and this is a little bit of spoiler warning. Guys, see the movie, but I'm gonna spoil some stuff here. In the opening moments of the film, uh, Kyle is hiding in the bathroom, and his mother goes to look in the room, and she kind of takes a look around. She doesn't see anything. She turns around and says, "You know, there's nothing here." And then the tooth fairy attacks her, but like. Supposedly she didn't see the Tooth Fairy, so why did it attack her? Um, also, later on in the film, um, Kyle's locked in uh, 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 in the police station. Uh, he's locked in a cell, and she's coming to get him, and she's attacking. Now, it is dark, like the power's out, but there's lights and stuff like that, but she's attacking like uh, different officers, and at one point she kills this guy who clearly doesn't see her. She flies out and kills him. Uh, it's just like they're only, she's only supposed to kill them if they see her. Like it just drives me nuts that they put a rule in there and then don't follow it. I don't know why. It's just maybe I'm being stupid, but um, I just think it's lazy writing. Um, but I know at the same time it's you know it's a, sort of a cheesy, you know, uh, you know I don't think they were expecting to make a lot of money off this flick. <laughs> um, so it's fine. Like it, you know it gets by or whatever. But I just I don't know that bothers me for some reason. Um, uh, I guess as far as the score goes in the film, um, it's nothing to write home about. Uh, there's nothing really all that special there. Um, nothing that stood out to me, that's for sure. Uh, I don't remember there being like a ton of um, crappy like 90s, late 90s, early 2000s, like, you know, um, middle of the road rock <laughs> in there, uh, which was something that was totally characteristic at the time. They would have these big, you know, soundtracks with all the the big, you know, bands at the time. Um, you know, none of that that I recall. Um, I know that the ending credits, of course, has a very, you know, rock heavy sort of song that you would expect to hear at the beginning of all the credits of all the movies at that time period. But again, the score just nothing to write home about. I don't remember anything all that particularly great about it. Um, and I guess overall, um, it was like a PG-13 horror flick that came out in the in 2003. Um, it's for some, like honestly, it's really nothing all that special. Um, 
uh, basically all the acting was really subpar or just par. <laughs> it wasn't all that special, especially the main guy in the movie, Chaney Clay, I think his name was. Um, you know, he was really like he didn't do much. Um, Emma Caulfield is easily the best actress in the, you know, in the whole movie. Um, she did she did a decent job, but she doesn't have much of a role, so it's it's sort of like <laughs> it sort of sucks because she had definitely the best acting chops and didn't have a lot going on in the movie. Um, um, in fact, there's one point point um, where the young the young boy in the movie uh, Lee Cormy plays him, Michael. Um, uh, he's a he's an Australian born actor. And you would know it during most of the movie. He kind of sounds funny, but he sounds totally... He doesn't sound like he's from Australia. Uh, he's supposed to be playing an American in the film. But at the end, when they're they're in this lighthouse, it's sort of the climax of the film, he yells at one point, and as soon as you hear it, you can tell he's Australian. Like, the second you hear it... Um, excuse me. You can tell instantly that he is, you know, uh, Australian. And they just left it in there. I guess it didn't really care that much. Um, and again, it's fine. Because the movie, like I said, there's nothing special about it. I just kind of like it. I, I saw it in the theaters in 2003, and, you know, it's kind of scary. There's no gore in it whatsoever, basically. Um, nothing in it that would make it, of course, rated R. It's a PG-13 film. Um, but it's it's kind of scary. Some of the scares are cheesy. Literally, there's a scene where, like, a black cat is thrown on a car. <laughs> like, it's really cheesy in that regard. Um, but uh, I don't know what it is about the movie. I kind of like it. Uh, and I've seen it, like I said, a couple of times, and um, I find myself watching it every couple of years and actually enjoying watching it. I don't know really know why, like I said. Um, it's either a guilty pleasure or a time waster, but, you know, if you could get a chance to see this movie, I would recommend giving it a watch for the hell of it. Um, I know that you can get the Blu-ray generally for, like, as cheap as 10 bucks. Um, I have no idea if it's any good, if it's, like, a 720p crappy transfer. I have no idea. I don't own it myself. Um, I know that I've seen the DVD even as low as two bucks, like on eBay or something like that. Um, so you might come across it in like a cheapy bin somewhere for even cheaper, who knows, or used or something like that. Um, but it's also like if you have Netflix, um, I, I just watched it on instant streaming. So it's available on Netflix, Netflix instant streaming, you know, as I make this video. Um, so, you know, maybe give it a watch. Maybe something to watch around Halloween. I don't know, it's kind of got like a scary witch in it. <laughs> um, but anyway, guys, uh, that's really all I have to say about Darkness Falls. Um, hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll talk soon. Peace.